we thought maybe one way of keeping it succinct was just to really focus on um, ecological design and, and design thinking in Gondwana and um, how we approach that in creating the work. We really wanted to, like a key part of, of creating Gondwana was, was creating an expression of the environment that's deeply connected to and, and drawn from place. So um, I hope the screen share is... Yes, the screen share working. Can you see what we can see? Yeah, great. Nice. <laughs> uh, so we just wanted to, to just briefly open um, with this poem by, by Lely Long Soldier, which in a lot of ways was our kind of guiding rope throughout the um, development and um, thinking through throughout kind of um, creating Gondwana. Um, you know, when, when you're creating a work that's looking towards the future, um, it brings up so many varied um, conflicting conflicting emotions um, that, you know, resonate throughout uh, the entire team. And for us, this was, um, you know, it was both like an emotional framework for kind of considering and um, and working through what was, you know, um, a pretty grim um, reading from a kind of climate data perspective, but it also um, reminded us of the of the multitude of possibilities that always remain open within every um, passing moment. So um, when we when we come to like designing place in Gondwana, you know, we could talk for for so long about how how we kind of came to that, but we essentially have just boiled it down into kind of these three um three layers because essentially uh, when we were um thinking about creating this rain virtual rainforest we didn't want to just create an environment or a space that things were just happening in but we wanted to design a sense of place a, a place that you can visit a place that is um evolving and a place that you can spend time in so the kind of first layer of that was was kind of the spatial element of it. So designing the environment and the terrain and the various kind of um, ecosystems that are in Gondwana as beaches and waterfalls and rivers. Um, so a lot of that was to do with the kind of like visual representation of a lot of the endemic um, species that exist only within this really, really small area and, and working really closely with um, traditional owners and uh, scientists to make sure that representation was as specific as and it could be. community as well, like yeah. a lot of the broader community really fed into the like that specificity of, of space. And then uh, the second is, is, you know, you can have a sense of space, but in order to, um, to have this sense that it's, that it's um, evolving requires a, a temporal element. So um, in Gondwana, there, there's the, the temporal system and the time time system is is, is quite complex, but um, it ranges from everything from like the kind of day night cycle um, through to kind of the, the weather systems and how they kind of procedurally change and um, the rules and parameters um, in which in which those patterns work. Um, but essentially, we really wanted to create a sense of time that was evident visually as you were moving through the forest. And, and a lot of that was just through crafting the, the rotation and the cycle of the sun and moon uh, to create um, this kind of dynamic effect where you can see all of the shadows stretching across the forest floor. Um, and, and instead of that being something that happens over a really long period of time, you can actually see, um, see that movement. And finally, um, is change so we have a space we have a time but in order for that time to mean something the environment needs to kind of um, change dynamically with it um and in gondwana there is kind of a multitude in which the various systems of change um work some are perceptible and happen in real time and, and might happen in front of you as you're um exploring through the forest but also others um not so much not so um uh, visually evident and or sonically evident um, and happen on, on uh, occur in kind of different wider time cycles that might be imperceptible. Um, so like beyond these, like working beyond these three elements, um, I think the other key part of, of how we created Gondwana and the philosophy that we brought into it was um, this idea of not being a master of the universe um, that you're in. I think with a lot of like VR or interactive projects, um, you're kind of like, you're often handed 
things like linearly on a platter or even if they're branching it's kind of like here's what you do next here's what you do next um it's like about doing or completing or finishing or even winning um but that's not how I exist in the world when I think of place and so um we were really interested in what uh, how we could create um an experience of which you were um only a part um and that and that you while the environment was kind of always receptive to your presence, you were co-creating and, and, and just one small part of something much larger. So this sort of arcane diagram uh, where, the wi where, where the wider circle is everything that's happening at any point in the rainforest and your perception of that is that smaller circle. Um, it's not to scale, it's probably more like this sort of scale. Um, but um, there's this, there's this, like, no one person can go through Gondwana and fully grasp everything um, that's happened, even if they stay in there for the whole, you know, currently it's running for seven days. Even if you stayed in there for seven days straight and you never slept, you'd still only catch, you know, what was happening in that one part of the forest um, at that time. Um, and this is something that, like, often came up in the conversations that we were having with the Indigenous elders, the Guguyalanji Bama, who, um, whose land... Um, the Daintree Rainforest is on, um, this sense that the rainforest is this dynamic living and sentient ecosystem of which um, humans are an essential but small part, um, and that you only gain, um, like, not necessarily mastery is in control, but knowledge of the um, of the place through spending time and, and, and deep time and, and listening and, and watching and learning. Um, an example, like a concrete example of, of that in Gondwana is in the VR version, there's an interactive gesture that you can do, um, but we don't tell you about it until you've gone through and finished the, um, or like left the forest for the first time, um, which is um, you kind of cup your hands um, and gather a little ball of energy. And then you can then you can direct that towards a plant or an animal to protect it from ever being impacted by climate change. If we told you about that when you first entered the experience, that it would become an experience about saving the forest as an individual, you know. Um, but it's something you can stumble upon and uh, upon, and often people do. Or we teach you about it when you exit for the first time, and then you can bring that knowledge back in the second time that you visit, um, and use that to kind of have a shifting um, relationship with the forest that's um, that's continuing to persist. Um, so I think like the important thing, like where the master of the universe um, side of things became really important as well was um, this, as I mentioned before, kind of no one can see everything, um, and I think that's just such a potent metaphor for how we have to think about climate change um, and our role within this ecosystem. It's not the role of one individual um, who, um, who can grasp everything and kind of figure things out from there, but it's about extrapolating our experience onto a larger whole, onto looking forward. You know, perhaps I've only seen from 2000 until 2007 in Gondwana, but I have to think about um, think about what happens in 2090 at the end of the experience and I have to think about my role within that um, and the role of the whole audience together in shifting that um, shifting the future um, which is is kind of influenced by how many people um, are in Gondwana how long they spend one person spending like I mentioned before spending the whole seven days within the experience is not going to make that much of a difference um, but um, but a whole audience together spending time is going to shift the resilience factor of the rainforest so that it um so that its um, outcome is not as dire as it's projected. So we kind of structured Gondwana around like the the development of the piece around um we had a six month period of residency within the within the Dane Tree we were living off grid, um and that was really an opportunity for us to learn and absorb as much as possible and spent we knew we wanted to make a durational piece um so we we're quite interested in what deep uh, like deep listening and 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 spending time within the forest um 
gave to us, um, as well as learning and listening from, as we mentioned before, local community, um, which was, uh, so just people that have been living there um, for a long time, revegetation organizations who are, who are doing, um, I guess, like NGO work in the space. Um, the Wet Tropics Management Authority were a really key, um, key part of that. So they're the land management body that manage the World Heritage Area and then um, and then the Gubi Alanji um, senior men um, that we spoke with. Um, and, and, oh, and scientists from James Cook University too. Yeah, and um, and that was everything from you know providing hard science around um, the uh, the climate modeling uh, for the Dane tree through to more kind of um, evocative conversations with with um, scientists and elders around um, you know the, the changes they're experiencing yeah. what they expect to see um, in in the future in more like a qualitative way what what would you expect to see and also just being granted access into um, parts of the rainforest that aren't typically accessible and and some and some of those are really kind of like pristine um, uh, uh, parts of a of a like, you know, a, a really ancient rainforest. So part of that was um, was just being able to like be able to um, uh, access those spaces and and sit there and draw inspiration from them. So it kind of Gondwana is kind of this like uh, constant. You know, it was a very iterative process. And while we we had the the early concept, which we knew was an environment changing over time. We, we remained incredibly open throughout that whole process. Mm -hmm.